Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel Houseplant Tea Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it behind me and in front of me today, I talk about tropical houseplants. So today is going to be a continuation of the plant review series with the beautiful plant that you're seeing in front of me. This is not a particularly difficult plant to find, generally at least where I live, but let me know in the comments down below if you struggle to find is the Epipremnum Marble Queen or Pothos Marble Queen, depends on how you might see it sold where you are. Let's set some ground rules for this video as with most of the review videos. If you are returning back, welcome back. As always, you know that down by the progress bar you can skip to your favourite section if you wanted to see something specific. If you are new, welcome to this light and sun tea that is this series. Now for the newbies that are joining, the, the kind of rules goes as follows, is that whenever I do these review series, they will be biased to my experience. There is no way that I can make this unbiased. It is a review of how I found growing this plant in my conditions, which for the new people here, I am based in the UK. I grow most of my plants, including this one, in a conservatory, and that might mean high temperatures in the summer, low temperatures in the winter, trust me, it's low temperatures in the winter, <laughs> high humidity levels, low humidity levels, it depends. So yeah, it's, it's going to be my experiences with this plant, but as with all of these reviews, I do encourage you to drop a comment down below about how you found growing this plant specifically. So yeah, so more people can learn, not just from my experiences, but from everybody else's as well. So coming into background with this plant, and for the people that have been here before, I am trying something new. I saw from the unboxing video that a lot of people preferred the view of me sitting down. So I'm not going to argue, it saves my back and my legs from standing up and filming these things. So I thought I'd try something while sitting down. It means I don't have to hold the plant all the time. Obviously you're a bit closer because this plant is a bit smaller. And I'll take it a bit back so you can kind of see it's full size. So that is the full plant. <laughs> The reality with this one is I've only just repotted it into the Soil Ninja Semi-Hydro Horse Mix. <laughs> the people that were on my previous video, which was the unboxing, they were just like, oh, how are you finding it? I'm just like, uh, I'm on the third order of a 30 litre Semi-Hydro Horse Mix. <laughs> that should tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> but I've recently, as in yesterday actually, moved this plant into the coarse semi-hydro mix. But let's talk a bit about how I came across this plant and how it got added to my collection. I'll talk a bit more about kind of how you can find it in availability, but a bit of a spoiler to begin with, this wasn't particularly difficult to find where I live. So in the UK, and this was a good few years back now, I would say this plant is probably, the title will obviously have it, <laughs> the people that have been here before will know, uh, either three or four years now. So I've had it for quite a while and I'm trying to think, yes, this was the smaller of the two. I bought two at some point. So one was a full blown plant and I will add a picture here. It's upstairs. It's kind of difficult to bring down. I'll put a picture here so you can see what that looks like. I will also put a picture here to show you what that plant looked like when I first got it. So you can kind of see this is from my plant care app. And then this one was a much smaller plant. So I think it was a tiny, tiny little plant. So the plant pot was only about this big and maybe four or five tiny, tiny leaves. And I think at that point I was intending it to go into a terrarium. I don't know what I was intending it, but I wanted a small version. I think that one, and I might be right in thinking that based on the level of irrigation with this, had an awful lot of creamy white variegation. And I know that there is a version of the Marble Queen, which people call the Snow Queen, if I'm not mistaken, which has got a lot more white than it does have green. It's almost, the leaves are almost entirely white. I think there's some speckling on that one. And I thought that one looked a bit more like that. And as with most people, if you find something in the store and they don't necessarily realize that they might have got something that's relatively exceptional and a good price, 
it got purchased. <laughs> so yeah, that was this. This plant was obviously quite small. Hopefully, I've already put a picture of what it looked like when I first got it. If not, I will add it here. And it has grown really, really nicely. And it wasn't, and again, I'll talk about this on availability, it wasn't massively expensive, so it was okay. The thing I will say about this, and I think this holds true based on the different people that I've spoken to, there's an awful lot of people that are very drawn to the Marble Queen. And I wasn't too sure until I started with my first one, and then it started growing and I'm just like, oh, actually, I, I kind of get it. I, I, I kind of get why people really like this one. Because I'm just like, eh. it's a variegated pothos. It's a bit like the golden pothos. It's not quite the same. It is quite an interesting plant. And obviously, and I'll hopefully be also inserting some clips, some close-ups of some of these leaves. But you might be able to see if I bring it in a bit closer. There is decent levels of irrigation. I did mention that one leaf that has an awful lot of white on it. I am aware that this is not a snow queen, by the way. I'm aware that this is a marble queen. But yeah, this is, out of the two plants that I have, this is the one that has the most level of variegation. Now, I will also say the other one that I've got upstairs, and hopefully that picture that I showed you might have made that a bit more obvious, the creamy variegation or the kind of creamy white variegation isn't as kind of obvious as it is as this one. But that one, so this one is almost getting kind of cactus level lights. Uh, so it's quite high, it's getting a lot of light. It's, yeah, it's, yes, it is bright, indirect, but only just indirect. So that will give you an idea. The other one is pulled back quite far back. So the reason why I wanted to include that picture and to kind of tell you this story is that you the variegation I found doesn't necessarily go away. It gets a bit muted. And also with that one, I've had the situation as it's grown and it's in slightly lower levels of light, I'm getting kind of certain like vines of the plant that are coming out all green and then I'm chopping it back to the variegated section and it's coming back with variegation. So that might be something to kind of bear in mind with this one that if you are growing it in a slightly shadier condition, you might need to do some pruning if it starts to get all green again back to the variegated section and you probably won't have as bright of a creamy white as you might be able to see in front of me here. But yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to say on the background section, let's move on. So coming into speed of growth for this one, <laughs> and some people that might have been around for my Manjula Pothos review will probably know that, I mean, it's still a Pothos. It's variegated, but it's still going to be a Pothos. I'll benchmark it against the Golden Pothos that I have growing in my conditions here as well, same, same locations as well. That's actually getting considerably lower light than this is as well. But Say in the summer, if a golden pothos in my space, in its location, is bringing out two to three new leaves each month, this probably isn't going to be bringing out quite as many, so it might not bring out three leaves in a month, but it probably will bring out two. Does that make sense? The same thing goes for the one that's in a slightly shadier location upstairs, and it's just the levels of irrigation that change. So yes, this is a relatively fast-growing plant, it is an epipremnum, it is a pothos, you will get that. Is there a slight delay because of the level of irrigation that it has? Yes. The other thing that some people might be asking is when you get the really highly variegated leaves, do you then start getting it much, much slower? I can't talk about the Snow Queen. If anybody's got the Snow Queen and they've got experiences with that level of variegation, please do drop it down below to, to kind of explain to people how you find the speed of growth on that one. But on this one, because there are certain leaves, and I'm trying to find a couple on here that have got a bit more green, so you might be able to see that one's got a sectoral chunk of green, this one does as well, and as does that a bit. So yeah, as long as you don't kind of remove those leaves, you could kind of try to force a bit more of that kind of speckled and more white predominant variegation. I haven't tried it, 
So I don't know whether or not you can affect it like that the same way that you would kind of chop back when, like on a Monstera Albo, for instance, how you would chop back if you're getting too much green and you want to maybe take it back to the previous leaf that had more white. I don't know if this would be the same with this one. I would imagine potentially. So, but as always with most of these plants, and again, I hopefully will be inserting some clips here, you can usually tell by the stem. So if the stem's got high levels of kind of that candy striping almost coming up to Christmas suit as well, so hmm, thought. But yeah, I think in terms of speed of growth, relatively fast, it's a pop-off. Coming into ease of propagation with this one, <laughs> and I'll bring it in a bit closer so you might be able to see some of the aerial roots. I don't know whether or not, yeah, there we go. You can see that one there. You can see a few more there. It, again, it's a pothos. It will give out aerial roots at the drop of a hat. Does it propagate easily? Yes. Does it take a bit longer than a standard golden pothos because there's less green on it? Also, yes, at least it has been in my experience. Is it a relatively strong propagator? Yes. Do you get the same kind of benefit by taking a cutting of this and putting it in water as you would with a golden pothos in terms of it releasing auxin, which kind of helps speed up the rooting of other cuttings in the same water? In my experience, yes. I mean, it's still very closely related to the golden pothos, so I would imagine that would still be the case. Will this do it a bit slower because of the level of irrigation than a golden pothos? Also yes. Would you probably be better off and hope to get faster results with a golden pothos instead of this? Yes. However, for the people that don't have a golden pothos and maybe only have this one, it should function in the same way, at least it has done in my experience, it just might take a bit longer. It's still going to release auxin. So it is something to do with the physiology of the plant where it has an overabundance of that auxin. So it does release it in the water, which it kind of helps with that stimulation of the root growth. But yeah, in terms of ease of propagation, relatively easy. And I mean, in most media, sphagnum moss, I haven't tried this in soil. <laughs> the people that have been here for a while know that I haven't actually propagated that many things straight into soil, which is shocking considering that most growers generally will just take cuttings, maybe put some rooting hormone, but not always, and just shove it into some kind of soil media and let it grow out because they're doing it at scale. But uh, yeah, I mean, sphagnum, damn sphagnum moss, perlite works really well with this, pond works really well with this. I'm pretty sure at some point I did just take a cutting off this and just shoved it into the same pond and I've now got a new stem. Um, yeah, pretty much most things. Water, obviously all of these things work really well with this. But yeah, that's enough on the ease of propagation. Let's move on to the next topic. So coming into availability with this one, and as I mentioned a bit earlier on in the video, in my part of the world, in the UK, I would imagine this maybe holds true sometimes for the EU, and I keep saying this a lot of the times, but I do have a lot of EU followers. Do correct me down below, because I'm thinking back now, whenever I go back home to Greece, and I speak to some of the amazing kind of followers and subscribers that I've got who are based in Greece, and we talk a bit more about plants, they always kind of say, look, we struggle to find most of these things. And that might just be a Greece thing. It might not be the whole of the EU. They don't have that many garden centers necessarily. They don't have, and if they do, they don't specialize that much in house plants. You'll get the really, really common stuff. You might not get even something like this, which to me, at least where I am, is almost a common house plant at this stage. You can kind of find it in a lot of places. Now, so when I first got it, it you would probably see it more in kind of more specialist houseplant stores or houseplants or plant stores that tended to have a bit more than just the average kind of box store type houseplants. Have I seen this in the bigger box stores? I'm pretty sure, at least in the UK, I'm pretty sure I may have seen this at B&Q. I might be wrong. I'm sure there's a whole bunch of people that follow me from the UK that might be screaming at me down in the comments. I do apologize. But I think I've seen this. Um, when I got it, it wasn't the cheapest thing in the world for a pothos, and I will say that. It's still 
was relatively affordable. I, I don't even know if the big plant, the one that I've got living upstairs, is was even in the double digits. It might have just been in, it might have just been in the low double digits, as in like 15, 20 pounds maybe. And it was a slightly larger plant and it was a bit more established and so on and so forth. The tiny one that I got, I'm pretty sure was like five or seven pounds back then. I'm pretty sure you can probably find it cheaper now. But yeah, so this is obviously a plant that at least here, those prices have come down even further now. Yes, it's more available, which, to me, is always a great thing because I think actually this is a good in like interesting plant that is slightly different than your kind of standard golden pothos. That it's a, a bit more available to kind of everybody for them to try things out because people have seen the golden pothos for years. They're probably sick and tired of seeing it right now. People that are not crazy plant fanatics like maybe all of us are. <laughs> But it's, it's a good introductory one. I know that there is slight issues with watering with this one, and I will touch on it on the accessories and care section. But yeah, no, this is a bit more available now. It was slightly less available previously, but yeah, overall, you should be able to find this, at least in my experience and in my location, relatively easily. So coming in to pests with this one, and it's an interesting one because it's still a pothos, or it's still an epipremnum. Have I ever suffered spider mites on this, personally? No. Have I ever suffered with some mealybugs on this? On occasion, and again, for the people who've been here for a while, know that I do generally deal with quite a few mealybugs. <laughs> My space is a mealybug central. And I'll, again, I will give kind of a bit more insight into that. When I say these, these things, I know it kind of sounds much worse than it is. I might find two or three mealybugs on one or two plants around here and there. And I treat it, it just, uh, I've got so many plants, I keep forgetting which ones I've treated. So in theory, if I kept treating it over the next two weeks, six, four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, maybe I might deal with it, but I keep forgetting them. So I'm just gonna spot deal with this now and it will go away for the next couple of weeks and I'll just deal with it again. Uh -huh. I'm a bit lazy. I also have a lot of plants, so. <laughs> but yeah, so mealybugs on occasion with this one. Thrips? I'm trying to think. I don't think I've had thrips on this one or the other one. I'm thinking about both the plants now. Yeah. Uh, occasionally, if, if these plants are in soil and it maybe stays a bit damp for too long, but that will cause issues because it is a pothos. Maybe fungus gnats, but that's less of the plant situation. It's more of the care that you're giving that plant and the and the growing media that you've got it in. But generally speaking, not that many pests with this one. So moving on to accessories with this one. <laughs> oh, janky support sticks for the win. And I will say this, with the exception of maybe one golden pothos that I've got in my office upstairs, which is by the way where the other Marvel Queen is, the golden pothos that I have is right behind me, it's big, it's in charge, there's huge leaves. That one I am growing on a moss pole. Probably one of the few plants that I've got on a moss pole. And I know, I know, I know, I know, I should be growing more of my plants on moss poles. I don't have the time, don't have the space, don't have the money to be doing that every single time for every single one of my plants. I'd be going crazy. And to be fair with most pothos type plants, most epipremnum type plants, as I found that if you give them a janky support sticks, as long as they're supported on it, you might not get the huge, huge leaves. And I know that if I put this on a plank, it would probably get much bigger leaves eventually, or if I put it on a moss pole, it would probably get much bigger leaves because those aerial roots have got something to attach to. But I will say that even on uh, a support stick, and you might be able to see some of these leaves are slightly smaller than some of these leaves further down below, is because this, until yesterday when I repotted it and I kind of rewound everything up, these were trailing. So they were starting to get smaller. But generally speaking, as long as it's got some form of support, I find that the leaves will stay a decent size. So it won't go for that kind of fully mature look. I don't think I've ever seen, I would love to see a Marble Queen that has got big leaves 
and has also fenestrated. I think that would be really cool. I don't know if anybody's done that, probably. Um, I think you're probably all going to mention, uh, Sid, is it, was it Sydney plant guy? Who I do also follow on Instagram as well. And yes, he has got some huge leaves on all of his plants. I don't know if he's got this one specifically. It's not coming to me at the moment. Yeah, I mean, as long as you've given it something to climb up on, talking about care, and some people may have noticed this is in pond, uh, or <laughs> pond. This is Soil Ninjas Semi Hydro Course Mix. I mean, it's a bit of a mouthful, but I mean, it's really, really cool. Um, and the reason why I had this in, the other one upstairs is still in my Arrowhead Soil Mix and it's still doing okay. I did find that what worked for me, because I know sometimes this can get a bit of root rot relatively easily. Does it get root rot as easily as the Manjula Popos? Not in my experience, so that's something to remember. Uh, it might be different in your situation. Obviously, as always with these things, just let everybody know down in the comments. If you think I'm talking rubbish and your experiences are different, tell us why they're different, but also tell us how you're growing it. Make it so that it gives some value to everybody as well if they're looking at it. So with this, yeah, so there was some people that I know that might get some root rot challenges with this. As long as it's a very, very light aroid mix, so it's got loads of, you don't even need to be that kind of convoluted with this, it just needs a bomb load of like perlite. It is an epipremnum, and as with most epipremnums, it can go towards dry quite a bit. It can lean into dry quite heavily for a few days actually, before you need to water it without throwing too much of a hissy fit. I've put it into um, kind of self-watering essentially and the semi-hydro mix just because, yeah, it, it works for me. It also means I don't have to ever worry about it rotting out. It never has done this way around. It does need a transitional period. So when you don't have the water reservoir, like I've mentioned in my what I've learned a year after dealing with pond video. Yeah, so that 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 is a thing. It gets it gets fertilized every every watering weekly, basically, because I just do the same with most of my plants at this point, as people that have been here for a while. The fertilizer that I use is liquid gold leaf. I'm pretty sure it's only available in the UK just yet. I don't know whether or not they're going to start shipping to other countries as well or to the EU. I don't know. But um, but yeah, relatively, it doesn't need an awful lot to be happy. You can have it in a standard pot and even to be fair, the soil that you probably bought it in, is it going to be great soil? Probably not. But it, this isn't a plant that's necessarily going to be difficult. The one thing I will say is try to let it go dry before you water it. This isn't one that I think works quite well of kind of like, oh, just before it goes dry, that's when you start getting into some issues, even with something like Pond or the semi hydro mix. So, I mean, to bear in mind. So coming into final thoughts for this one, and overall, I'll, I'll kind of start like I normally do. So knowing what I know now about this plant, if I didn't have it, would I purchase it? 100%. 100%. This is a no-brainer. It's a beautiful, beautiful pothos plant. I am trying to think now, and I might go on a limb here, if I had to choose one of the pothos -y type Epipremnums, basically. I'm not talking about the Epipremnum penatum or anything along those lines. Uh, or the skeleton key, which I still have not found. I need to find a decent, mature sized skeleton key at some point. Oh. Uh, my wish list video. It's getting better. Some of the stuff did arrive from the Equigenera unboxing, but yeah. If I had to choose one, I think this might be the one. Thinking the Manjula Pothos close second with maybe the neon pothos, I'd say. Uh, Happy Leaf is somewhere in there as well, and I know from that previous video that people said that the Nanjula pothos and the Enjoy are somehow closely related. Uh, or is it not the Enjoy, is it the Manjula, the, oh, the Happy Leaf. So, yeah, I still think this one, it just brings me a bit of joy. I quite like how the variegation, and I'm surprised because I didn't think out of all of them when I was first seeing this, I'm like, oh, I don't understand what the fuss is about. It's a bit about marbling. Nah, 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 nah. I really have come to love this plant quite a lot. And that's that should tell you something as well, that for a 
Pothos type plant, I've got two of these. So, and one of them sits right next to me every day whilst I'm in my office working. So that should tell you something. But yeah, so that's the one thing. In terms of a score from zero, one being the worst, 10 being the best, I'm not gonna give it a 10 because this might not super excite everybody else. And at the end of the day, it's still an epipremnum. It's still a kind of pothos. It might not be the, the it thing that everybody wants, but I would still give this a solid eight or a nine. I love this plant. I think it's great. And it's uh, people, again, that have been here for a while, it's not fussy. It doesn't make my life difficult. It grows quite beautifully as long as you do a couple of things kind of right, really. Um, and it can take a knocking and it will keep coming back. Again, it's a pothos. I've said that so many times in this video. I'm pretty sure I've said that in the <laughs> Manjula pothos video as well. But uh, a pothos is a pothos is a pothos is a pothos. Uh, but yeah, no, definitely really, really good high scores for me on this one. What about you? What do you think of this specific plot? Tell me down below. And yeah, I will let you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for joining me. Hopefully you have enjoyed and hopefully I will see you here soon. Thanks. Bye.